In the video today, I'm going to be reviewing the 85mm f1.4 from Samyang. Now, this is an RF lens. I'm going to be giving you my completely unbiased review on this today, and I'll be talking about how it performs. So just the other day, I was talking to one of my friends on Instagram, Francis F Photo, check him out. The handle will be here somewhere. And we were talking about Canon RF lenses. Now we both agreed that they're really, really good, but they're very expensive. So that got me to thinking about trying out this lens right here, the Samyang 85 F 1.4. Probably the most attractive thing about this lens was the price. You see, UK pounds, this costs 500 pound or even less, and US dollars, it costs $600 or less. So it's a lot more attractive than its closest rival, which is the Canon F1.2 85 millimeter, which comes out at around about two and a half thousand pound. So one of the things that surprises me a lot about this lens is how sexy Samyang have made it. It almost looks like a carbon copy of the 85mm f1.2 from Canon, but of course at a lower price point. Now it's a very minimal design, which means that actually on the lens itself, you only have the one switch here, which is the autofocus and manual focus switch. You do have a very nice and satisfying turn on the focus ring here. Also the build quality of this lens is actually very good. It's not far off the weight of my RF 24 through to 105 millimeters, which is quite a considerably heavy lens. It's also a similar size. Now, one thing that you'll find missing from this lens is IBIS. It's not included, which means you're not going to have image stabilization built in the lens. But if you have a camera body with image stabilization, then that's OK. Now, unfortunately, I'm shooting this on the RP, which doesn't have stabilization anyway, and that means I'm going to have to shoot at a higher shutter speed. So it's just something worth bearing in mind. If you are someone who is looking for a bit of image stabilization in your lens, you're not going to get it with this one. So let's really test out the autofocus on this lens and see how it holds up. When I'm actually focusing on different things with this lens, it actually focuses quite quickly. Now, it's not the fastest focusing system out there, of course, but that's because the lens is actually, it's 500 pounds or less. So you're not going to get a focus system as quick as you would do with the RF glass, but it's still very fast and also very reliable. Using this lens alongside Canon's iAuto Focus, it works very well. And this is some really good information that the wedding photographers and the portrait photographers watching this will appreciate, knowing that this 85 millimeter F1.4 will be a great choice for them for these purposes. So while out in Litchfield, I tried to capture a variety of scenes so that you could really see how this lens performed in different situations. Now I've got to say, my experience with this lens was really very good. You had some really good center sharpness with a little bit of softness in the edges in the um, wide open apertures. It also dealt well with harsh sunlight. And of course, as you would expect, it's a very nice portrait lens. There were though a few issues. It's worth mentioning that when you shoot wide open at f1.4 up to around about f4, you do experience some really heavy vignetting, as you can see in the picture here. But when you get to f4, you notice that that's pretty much completely gone and then it's absolutely fine. Another thing that I did experience is when shooting into the sun, you can see the lens flare here, and this actually was at times quite bad. I suppose the good news to put on this is though that not many people are really shooting into the sun too often, so this is probably something that you can avoid when using this lens. Now to really get a proper example of how sharp this lens is, I'm gonna show you a picture of my very measurable looking cat. If we zoom in, you can see that it's very nice and sharp when photographed wide open at f1.4. And you also get that really nice, pleasant background blur that you would be expecting when shooting with this kind of lens. 
So I'm going to wrap today's video up about this 85mm f1.4 from Samyang, sharing with you the quick pros and cons list of what you get and what you won't get with the lens. First up, the pros. This lens takes some really nice sharp photos. You get great center sharpness in all of your pictures throughout the whole aperture range with a little bit of softness noticed when you're shooting wide open up to around about f4. It's got a quick and reliable autofocus system which works great with Canon's eye autofocus. It's f1.4. Yes, that's right. You can now get a third party lens from Samyang which works on the RF system for Canon and it's f1.4 at under £500. It's also well made, looks professional and feels great in your hands. Finally, do I have to say it again, the great price. Super cheap and affordable for anyone looking to get into the Canon camera system. There are a few cons though. First up you get the heavy vignetting which is pretty noticeable when shooting at f1.4 through to f4 but then it does disappear. You also get quite noticeable lens flare when shooting towards the sun. This is something I wish Samyang would have addressed with some extra coatings on the lens to remove it. But hey, it's there. And if you do shoot into the sun, maybe it's something worth considering. Finally, there's no image stabilization on this lens, just like you experience with the more expensive Canon F1.2. So if you are shooting with a camera with no IBIS in, then this might be a deal breaker if you want to get some image stabilization. If you're a portrait photographer looking to get into the Canon mirrorless camera system and you don't have too much money to do so, then my advice is get this lens. It's a really great addition to this range of cameras and it's something you should consider if you're on a lower budget. I hope you've enjoyed the video today and you've got something really quite valuable from it. If you have, give it a thumbs up and share any comments down below that you've got about this lens or any questions that you want to ask. Finally, if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe and the notification bell to join the really friendly community here at Ben's Guide of Photographers and Filmmakers. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.